All right, what do they have to say at the offices? I guess the same old dialogue pops up. Stop messing around, Falcon. Let's help Prince Juan already. La conciergerie. <laughs> totally nothing. Uh, okay, so now we have a choice. Two days left. Chocolate Emporium, I don't think we have anything to do there. Louvre, we wasted already. Uh, we need to go back to this place. And I would think this place to talk to the swan. Alright, let's talk to uh, Mousy first. Oh, hello again. Hi, Mousy. Mousy, we have a message for you. It's from Prince Juan himself. He wants to know if the birds have flown south for the winter, whatever that means. Oh, yes, yes, the birds have migrated successfully. But if Monsieur, I mean Prince Juan, told you that, then that must mean he trusts you. He must want you to take these. Go on, take them, take them. These are used train ticket stops? It looks like two people took a railway trip to Vienna. What exactly is the point this of this, Mousy? Hmm, Prince Juan said that they would help with the trial. See the names, see the names. We already established this was Volpi, so why they still the Prince Juan? Gautier Signe, Nicole Signe. Ah, the Swan people. I recognize the surname, but I don't know who these people are. Neither do I, really. Monsieur, I mean Prince Juan, just told me to book train tickets for these people and to make sure they caught the train. <clears throat> and so and so, this is what I did. Strange, I'm not sure exactly how these stops are supposed to help with the trial, but I'll keep hold of them just in case. We got ticket stops. Two ticket stops for a train bound to Vienna. Seats are booked for Gautier and Nicole Signe. Alright. <clears throat> Let's go, Sperson. I'm done playing courier. Good call. And another day wasted. January 20th. 20th. Thursday. I guess no choice but to go to our office. To receive a threat or what? Feeling pretty confident about this case, the big picture is coming together nicely. It does? I don't see it. I'm somewhat relieved that Prince Juan came clean, his secret was putting the whole case in jeopardy. We've still got one day until the trial, but how to spend it? I suppose we could revisit the Louvre, or maybe we should just play some cards at La Canard Joyeux. Something wrong, Spurson, you're being unusually quiet. Falcon, we need to talk. What's up? See, I was doing some thinking. Dangerous thing to do, I know. Anyway, I realized that we were missing a crucial piece of evidence. What evidence would that be? Well, we know that Major Hal consumed a piece of chocolate before he died, and we know that he died of poisoning. But we still aren't sure that the chocolate was the cause. That's true. If you keep pushing the chocolate theory, Cocorico will almost certainly bring that up. So I thought to myself, if one were to consume the wrapper itself, then that may provide proof of whether it contains traces of poison. Well, sure, that could work, but it would be incredibly foolish. Wait, were you thinking of eating the wrappers, Parasun? Maybe. Well, stop those thoughts right now. I'm not going to let you potentially kill yourself like that. Heh, <laughs> I knew you would say that. That's why I already consumed the wrapper. What? <laughs> 45 minutes ago. Sparrowson, Sparrowson. Hmm, so he is still alive. We're at the doctor. Doctor, is Sparrowson okay? Dr. Felret. Well, he's not conscious right now, but he's stable. I think it's safe to say that your friend is not on his deathbed. Oh, thank God. How did you say this happened again? It's a long story. Lawyering occupational hazard. Doctor, can you tell me what poison caused this? I have no idea. I'm an expert in mental health, not toxicology. But I have sent for a specialist who should be here by tomorrow morning. He will make a full assessment. That's good to hear. Thanks, doctor. They could care of him. Wait a moment. There is the matter of the bill. We'll have to discuss it later. I have an important case to prepare for. And I'm one partner down. I see. Well, rest assured that your friend is in good hands. What about the bill? This is terrible. 
What the hell was Sparrowson thinking? I can't win a case like this. You? I finally found you! Did someone say something? Running around like a headless chicken? You're one tricky lawyer to find. I told you to drop the investigation, but you just wouldn't listen. Who's speaking? I can see you, monsieur. Step forward. Ooh. All right, I'll step forward. But it will be the last thing you'll ever see. Whoa-oh. Au revoir, JJ Falcon. We're being thrown in the river? What just happened? Where am I? Am I dead? No, that can't be right. This is night time, I'm just sleeping. If I focus and count to three, I should be able to wake up. One, two... Did it work? <laughs> what is happening? We're underwater. Is he sleeping? Is he tripping? Is he dead? Ah, Dame Caroline, you must be dreaming. I can't believe how easy you were to fool. I put on a cute to voice, acted all innocent, and you ate the whole thing up. Shut up. Shut up, I don't need to be lectured by a murderer. I'm the murderer? Why, Monsieur Falcon? It was your accusations that put Baron Rorgui on death row. It wasn't my fault. He's tripping all right. Hey, where are you going? Out of my way, Severin. I'm not done talking to Dame Caroline. It wasn't my fault? Is that the excuse you make after all of your failures? I'm not making excuses. Failure after failure after failure. No desire to improve yourself. You're a joke of a lawyer, JJ. Don't call me JJ. That's all you have to say? How pathetic. You don't even deserve to stand in your grandfather's shadow. My... My grandfather? What is he on about? I'll prove you wrong, I can do better. Oh, it's you, Sparrowson. Have you come to berate me too? What? No, no, I'm just here to tell you to wake up. Wake up, monsieur, wake up. Hey, can you hear me? I said wake up. January 21st, Friday. I guess we woke up. At the Pont des Arts, this newly built bridge boasts a magnificent view of the Louvre and offers quick passage across the Seine. Ah, it's Toussaint. Did he save me? Come on, monsieur, wake up. I said wake up, you're starting to worry me. Oh, thank goodness, I wasn't sure whether I would have to find a doctor or a mortician. Look, my head. Where am I? The Pont des Arts, you know, by the Louvre, in Paris, France. I just fished you out of the Seine. Nearly broke my rod doing it. Wait, I know you. You're the dis disrespectful lawyer guy. Giro Falco or something. What time is it? Actually, what day is it? You hit your head pretty hard, huh? It's the 21st of January, and around 9 o'clock in the morning by my reckoning. 21st, 9 o'clock. Oh no, the trial. I should have been at the Cour, Cour d'Assise ten minutes ago. Welp, you're running late. But take it easy, monsieur. I'm sure they'll be understanding. Maybe if I sprint it. In your condition? That would be stupid. Take a seat. Clear your head. I'll go get some dry clothes. No time. He's kind. Wait, monsieur. At least take this before you go. What's this? A dip pen? No, wait. It's a modern fountain pen. Bone handle. Gold nip. This is very fancy. Thanks, monsieur, but this isn't mine. Really? Are you sure? You were holding it pretty tightly when I found you. I was holding this? Then I suppose it has to be mine. Okay, we have a fountain pen. Maybe it is from the guy who pushed me in the water. Falcon awoke upon the Pont des Arts with a fountain pen in hand. It contains green ink. Green ink. And there the doctor has been added to the list. Dr. Falre, a doctor who specializes in psychology. 
Thanks, fisherman. I owe you one. <laughs> hey, don't call me a fisherman. <laughs> Alright, we're back in court. Still with the shady Judge Romulus. It's 9 o'clock. I believe it's time for the roll call. Is the defense not present? Tsk, such unprofessionalism. There is no defense, and this trial cannot proceed any further. We must make a ruling based on the evidence that has already been presented. I will now converse with the jury. We shall decide whether Prince Juan is guilty of murdering Major Hal and of conspiring to murder the king. Your Honor, may I have a word? Fine, but make it quick. I'm a firm believer that the trial must be orderly and punctual. There is no room for wishy-washy dilly-dallying. But it seems somewhat rash to end a trial session the moment it is due to start. I guess he is a fair, a reasonable prosecutor at least. Perhaps it would be prudent to wait 5 or 10 minutes in case the defense is just a little tardy. Then the trial still has a chance to proceed and justice will be served. You are the prosecution, are you not? You have nothing to worry about. A guilty verdict is all but guaranteed. Your Honor, you appear confused. I'm not here to secure a guilty verdict. Of course you are. You're a prosecutor. By definition, you're here to prosecute. No, my job description is to prosecute. But I'm here in this courtroom to ensure that justice is served. An unfair and unbalanced trial is not in the spirit of justice. It's very noble of you. But if the defense is absent, then there is little that can be done. I'll hear no more about this matter. I will now talk with the jury. The Wheeze, the defense is present. Wheeze, your honor. You're too late, Falcon. Mon dieu, JJ, you look like a total mess. Did you take a morning swim in the sand or something? S something like that. Your honor, we're all present. We're only three minutes over schedule. Let's not needlessly dirty the pure name of justice. Rules are rules, prosecutor. Falcon clearly has no respect for legal procedure. Frankly, for turning up while looking like a drowned rat, I ought to hold him in contempt of court. Your Honor. Wheeze. But Your Honor. Rules are rules. One more word out of either of you, and I shall have you both disbarred. He's crazy. It's a pity. The King of France was most looking forward to standing behind the witness podium. The... The King of France? He's here? <laughs> Is that a duck? No, it's not a duck. Louis-Philippe. Oh, are we not doing the trial after all? That's a pity. Uh, Your Majesty, what a surprise. We, uh, well, you see... You know, it's my seventh time testifying against a would-be assassin. But it's the first time seeing a trial where the case has ended before it even began. Well, the defense, uh, he was late and, uh... Oh, pish posh. France didn't become a great and dignified kingdom through rigorous punctuality. Let's go ahead with this trial. It'll be fun. Look, I'll say the oath to get us started. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Did I get it right? That was perfect, your majesty. JJ, I trust you have no objections with the king testifying. No, no objections here. Going ahead with the trial is fine with me. Let's look at my uh, character list. He has not been added yet. And surely you wouldn't stand in the way of the king, would you, your honor? Gah, fine. Proceed with this cursed trial. Excellent. Now, your majesty, could you tell us your activities on the day of the murder? My activities? Well, I started my day with tea and toast as I normally do. I was dressed in my PJs at the time. I think you can skip ahead a little. Perhaps your arrival at the Louvre. Ah, right, of course. Well, my entourage and I entered through the Louvre's south entrance around 9 o'clock. We passed through the Salle du Tibre with little fanfare. At the Grande Galerie, I unveiled a new painting and gave a short speech to inspire the citizens who attended. That's when I was approached by a man claiming to be the Prince of Spain. He presented a rose, which was taken by Major Howell, and, well, I think you know the rest. Indeed we do, Your Majesty. Madame and Monsieur of the Court, what we have here is another testimony that establishes Prince Juan's guilt. And this is no ordinary testimony. It is a testimony of perhaps the most trustworthy man in all of France. Oh, you flatter me, Prosecutor. But I am the trustworthiest in all the kingdom, aren't I? I have no doubt, Your Majesty. 
Nonetheless, I would like to perform a cross-examination. How dare you doubt your king, the utter nerve. Oh, calm yourself, judge. I have no qualms with standard legal procedure. Defense, please proceed. I want to see your best courtroom drama material. Alright, this is going to be interesting. <clears throat> Alright, we entered through the Louvre South entrance. Around 9 o'clock, doesn't seem to be any doubts in that. We pass through the Salle du Tibre with little fanfare. In the Grande Galerie I unveiled a new painting and gave a short speech. That's when I was approached by a man claiming to be the Prince of Spain. We already established he isn't the Prince of Spain. Is there anything else we can press? What about the tickets? Not really the pen? We don't know. I guess we should ask about the Prince of Spain. Your Majesty, you say that you were presented with a rose by the Prince of Spain. Indeed, he formally introduced himself. I knew he was telling the truth because he called me Señor. <laughs> He's not the smartest of the bunch. That man was not the Prince of Spain. Your Majesty, Prosecutor, members of the court, brace yourselves because I have a revelation that will turn this trial on its head. Juan Querido is not the Prince of Spain. That's not a revelation, Falcon. It isn't? Of course not. We all know that the current ruler is Queen Regnant Isabella II and that she has no children. The Queridos are obviously pretenders to the throne. Prince Juan's title is probably self-appointed. Uh, <laughs> Alright, uh, never mind then. Clearly I'm barking up the wrong tree, never mind then. Uh, no. Uh, I would assume that saying like his name isn't even Juan would be nonsense. Um, let's ask about the Sol de Tibre, that's where the chocolate was found, right? Your Majesty, you say that you passed through the Salle du Tibre uneventfully. Indeed, we stopped briefly to look at the paintings and then moved on to the Grande Galerie. Uh, what did you see in the Salle du Tibre? Could you elaborate? What did you see in the Salle du Tibre? What did I see? Well, Roman stuff mostly. I meant aside from the Roman artifacts. For example, did you talk to someone in the room who wasn't a member of your entourage? You're reaching, JJ. The king already testified that he passed through without encountering anything of interest. Well, I want the king to elaborate. I've reached the belief that this was a key moment on the day of the murder. I want the king to elaborate on exactly what and who he saw. And I suppose that you will have to proceed, your majesty. Alright, let me think. So there was that giant doorstep, and there was that copper urn thing, Oh, there was something else now that you ask. I was offered a box of chocolates by some peasant mademoiselle. I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but Major Hal was keen to accept a chocolate or two on my behalf. Aha, so that's it. So the swan is a perpetrator after all. What? Hmm? Did I say something startling, prosecutor? No, no, please continue, your majesty. I think the prosecution is startled because it just came to the realization that I was not spouting drivel in the previous trial session. Well, that's debatable. To cut a long story short, your majesty, this mademoiselle may hold some relevance to the case at hand. Could you describe her? Really? She is relevant? Well, let me think. I didn't get a good look at her face, but she was a sorry-looking swan, probably in her late teens or early twenties. A young, sorry-looking swan, you say? I don't suppose her name was... Mademoiselle Signe? Signe. That sounds familiar. Why, yes, I think that was it. She was called Mademoiselle Signe. I see. This is undoubtedly significant. Mademoiselle Signe gave chocolates to Major Hal minutes before he died. Now, just one minute. I see what you're alluding to, JJ. You're suggesting that the gifted chocolates killed the Major. But that line of reasoning holds no weight because the evidence is circumstantial. Circumstantial, my tail feathers. The king just testified that Major Hal ate chocolates. Yes, that much is no longer in dispute. 
You still have not proved that the chocolates were poisoned. 